Um, okay, so did you guys know that one of music's most important inventors is from right here in Fullerton, California, and that he even studied at Fullerton College? Well, his name was Leo Fender, and musicians such as Buddy Holly, Jimi Hendrix, uh, bands like The Smiths, uh, they all used his instruments, and those are all bands that I've been a fan of. And it's not just uh, the bands that I'm a fan of that use his instruments, but the ones I'm related to as well. Uh, my dad and his brother, they've both been playing Fenders for longer than I've been walking this earth, uh, which is why I decided uh, to, to research this. And while I'll be talking to you guys about some various innovations that Leo Fender made to the electric guitar, uh, one of his most famous instruments in particular, the Stratocaster, and the influence he has had on music. So first I'd like to go over several ways that he innovated the electric guitar. Um, first, he was the first guitar builder to basically kind of streamline the manufacturing process. He made his guitars uh, with as few parts as possible so that they could be easily disassembled and reassembled. Um, before this, if one part of your instrument broke, if you got a crack in the neck or something, the whole thing was essentially out of commission. Um, and he was also the first person to put all six tuning keys on the same side of the headstock, which is this top piece, which is basically a design that just helps keep it more in tune longer. Uh, this had been seen on some older acoustic guitars, but he was the first person to put it on an electric guitar. And he was also the first person on a pickup. Um, the magnet is essentially what uh, picks up the sound vibrations and is how it, it picks up and it runs it through the guitar and then through the cable and through the amplifier. Um, he was the first person to give one magnet for each string. Um, and in Fender of the Golden Years, Leo is quoted as saying, I think that perhaps I was the first person to use separate magnets, one for each string. That way I found that the notes didn't seem to run together. You could get more of an individual performance off each string. And uh, he also really innovated the style. Um, no one until Leo was making guitars that looked and felt as good as they sounded. And uh, one, one guitar in particular, um, the Stratocaster, was very innovative. It came out in 1954, uh, and it's also known as Strat for short. Um, this is the guitar that kind of uh, is one of the most beloved guitars among guitarists. Everyone who plays a Strat absolutely adores their Strats. Um, and there are a few uh, more technical advances made on this guitar. He put on this vibrato bar, which the way he designed it, it was floating. It wasn't mounted directly on the wood. It had its like resting on the beam almost. So you can bend it up and down, allowing you to change the pitch in two directions, which gave players more access to new sounds. Um, and this was the first guitar to have three pickups, which uh, using the pickup selector you can choose to have the sound be picked up from this back one, the middle one, or the top one, which makes it a really versatile instrument of giving you access to three different sounds. And I actually have a video clip of demonstrating this. So the, the, the nice thing about this one and about most old Stratocasters in general is that the next the neck pickup has got this big fat throaty bluesy tone. The middle pickup, on the other hand, has a glassier kind of pretty tone. And good. Good for rhythm guitar and things like that. The back pickup is kind of sticking with the Telecaster vibe, which is a little bit more twangy and country sounding, so, uh, you know. Get that Telecaster sound, although not quite as bright and twangy. He was a guitar player from Super Tramp, if any of you guys know that. Alright, so, well those are two reasons why the instrument sounded great. Um, He's, why musicians were attracted to it because of those sounds they were able to get. But they also love the way it looks. These, these cuts and its rounded edges make it, uh, make it just look really good. And they also gives it, it's really lightweight and it feels incredibly balanced and it's just really comfortable to hold and play. Um, so yeah, so that's the Stratocaster. And these are two of my favorite Strat players. That's Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, 
And so now that we've taken a look at the at the actual guitars, uh, let's take a look at how he just impacted music. Um, like I've shown here, his instruments uh, found their ways. Found uh, musicians were attracted to his instruments. Um, a lot of superstars really found them. Superstars in music like Buddy Holly, who's one of the fathers of rock and roll. Uh, Bob Dylan, who's kind of known around the world as one of like, the greatest songwriters ever. He played a Strat. Um, and Jimi Hendrix, who basically revolutionized an instrument. It wasn't the same before him, and it hasn't been the same since. And they all played Strats. And they didn't just influence the superstars of music. Um, average folks got their hands on these Strats. They, they wanted to learn an instrument. They wanted to buy just a really quality, solid instrument. They saved up some money, and they bought a Strat. Um, people like my dad, people like me, and guitar players all over the world. And uh, his guitars also came about at a really pivotal time in American music, which had many genres kind of just finding and defining their sound. Uh, country, blues, rock and roll, and they were pretty much all playing uh, Fender guitars. Um, so today, we, I've told you about some of the innovations that Fender made to electric guitars. Uh, shown and gone over the sounds and looks of one of his most famous and iconic guitars, the Stratocaster, admired for its versatility and sheer beauty. And I also explored the influence that Leo's tinkering has had on music. Um, Leo Fender's tinkering made the electric guitar an efficiently manufactured and extremely high quality instrument. Think of him as kind of the Henry Ford of guitars. Uh, he efficiently made quality instruments that average folks could get their hands on and his stuff just so happened to look and sound better than anything else around. And that's it. So Lupe, what did you think? Um, I liked his introduction, how he expressed why he was interested in the topic, um, how it's been in his family for, for a while. Um, the facts about the development of Fender were pretty interesting as well. Um, and I like how he showed the video showing the differences between the pickups, so that gave me a good on that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I liked a lot of the things in the speech. I thought you had a very good reference to the previous speech. Let's face it, we just had a speech about musical instruments. And so you say that, but you also transition nicely into the attention device that you had, the rhetorical question, and the kind of the local area interest on this. And I thought that that was nice. Um, there's a very clear purpose statement, an excellent identification of what the body of the speech is going to consist of. And I thought uh, you did a good job on that. Uh, in the first part of the speech, when you're talking about the innovations, I, I thought you did a good job describing the innovations. The visual references were pretty clear. Um, I would have liked maybe a little bit more uh, citation on some of the information there. We got one citation from um, uh, Fender himself, from his book, uh, and I thought that that was, that was fine, uh, but it, it might make sense for its Everybody in the world writes about this kind of stuff, so it just feels a little bit thin uh, as a result. Um, it's not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just, like I think I've said to a couple other people, you could have added a little bit of an extra layer to it to make it, I think, uh, even more appealing. The explanations, I thought, were very clear for the most part. Uh, not playing a guitar and not being a musician, uh, I had a pretty good idea what you were talking about. I did wonder why it was easier to keep the... Uh, guitars in tune by having all of the uh, knob, the tuning knobs, what are the, is there a name for them? Oh, uh, yeah, there's tuning, knobs. tuning knobs. Uh, on the one side, I, you know, it, you said that helped keep it in tune. I'm going, well, why is that? Is it, what, what's going on about that? So there were, there were, there's always room to talk about more. The question is, you know, how, how much can you go into it? And I think that that would be, you know, why that's important is another one of those things that you could talk about. Uh, I, I like the video clip too. Uh, that it